So I'm walking around the deserts of Dashur at the foot of the Red Pyramid with the Bent Pyramid. I don't know, a couple miles away. This is supposedly the funerary monument of the King Senefru during his rather obsessive streak of building these gigantic monumental pyramids. But one of the main mysteries here is, you know, walking all around the base of the Red Pyramid, there's not really any funerary monuments like you see in uh, previous necropoli like, uh, like the Pyramid of Zosser. So up here's Land of Kim. <laughs> What's up everybody? So we were talking about one of the strange things here is that, you know, Senefru supposedly is building this pyramid uh, and going on this rather obsessive streak of building these giant monumental pyramids. But there's no decoration inside like you see at Saqqara uh, in memoration of King Zosser. Uh, there's no turquoise scarabs decorating the walls meant to look like the king's uh, palace during his life. There's nothing like that here. It, right. it's, uh, it's totally different. And it goes on for the Maidum Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid, the Red Pyramid, Khufu's Pyramid, Khafre's Pyramid, Menkare's Pyramid. Um, it's uh, just a total mystery. What do you think? So another question about the Seneferu Three Pyramid Burial Hypothesis is why start out in the Fayum Oasis? So the Pyramid of Maidum is located in the Fayum Oasis, which is like a, an hour and a half, two hour drive from where we are here in Dashur. So he built this massive pyramid, the Pyramid of Maidum, in the Fayum Oasis, which had catastrophic collapse of the exterior casing stones, which basically brought the whole construction process and the entire pyramid crashing down. And then he restarted the process here in Dashur with what they say started with the Bent Pyramid. And you'll see here in just a minute when we walk up towards there, the execution of the architectural design is immaculate. And I think it's a really unfortunate myth about the construction of the Bent Pyramid that this was somehow a mistake in the engineering or design phase that they had to change the taper at the top. It's actually very intentional because the slope angle of the top of the Bent Pyramid is exactly the same as what you see mm -hmm. here in the Red Pyramid. You could take this one and sit it on the top and it's the exact same slope yeah. angle. So that slope angle is mimicked between these two structures. And again, I think it's a very unfortunate misunderstanding about the construction of the bent pyramid that that was somehow an architectural or engineering error and then they came over here and built this one and i think you'll agree that looking at these two after seeing what we saw on the giza plateau that these are just as impressive as anything on the giza plateau yeah yeah i totally feel the same way i also love just the setting of this that it's out here yeah. in the <laughs> desert no, it no feels one. like you're in an ancient place yeah this this is really amazing giza was indescribable how monumental and colossal everything is there in the density you're walking around Giza and it's like everywhere you look there's something new to see but being out here in the desert of Dashur at the foot of the pyramid and there's nobody here this feels like I'm standing in a very ancient place So during the three weeks that I spent in Egypt last month, I had the pleasure of first meeting up with a friend that I had had online for a little while. His name is Jeffrey Drum, but you may know him as the Land of Kim, and essentially his entire thesis is that the pyramids of ancient Egypt, or at least most of them, were actually alchemical factories. And while I really have no comprehensive understanding at all of surrounding his theories, he was gracious enough to meet up with me and actually take me all the way around Giza and Saqqara for the first couple days that I was there. And he was the best tour guide that I could have asked for. So we were just discussing this red coating compound that we have chemical analysis detailing the exact chemical composition of this coating compound. And it's all over several casing stones on the eastern side and also on the capstone, well, the remaining pieces of the original capstone that now make up this replica capstone on the east side. And the last time we were out here, we happened to find this. So this is an original edge piece of the casing stone. So imagine this piece of casing being an edge piece 
that went up the side of the pyramid. And you can see here on this edge piece that both sides of the edge were originally painted with this red coating compound. And the coating compound is a mixture of three different chemicals. It's silicon dioxide, sulfur trioxide, and aluminum trioxide, which created a chemical and corrosion resistant coating compound that once covered the entire exterior of the structure. With the paint on both sides, other than the you know, actual erosion of the stone itself, which has weathered away a lot of it. But here you can see on this edge, the red paint and the remnants on the other side. And it's really cool to envision this piece sitting in its original position on the edge of the red pyramid. All right, so we're talking.